Welcome back to the Stephen I Show. I know I said I'm going to say it again, but Adam, Happy New Year. I have not talked to you since the New Year. <laughs> um, you know you're not supposed to say it after a certain period of time. When do you stop saying Happy New Year? Uh, I don't think I ever stop. Oh, you want to know? Those. Well, we got Lunar New Year, and yep. then we have another New Year coming up soon. You know, it's just it's a it's a year of New Year, so why no, why stop? Right. I, I think, think, I see think Adam, it should be legal. It should be legal, and you know, if you see someone for the first time in the New Year, I think after February, let it go. Just say hi. How you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, no, now when get... when do the jokes that you say? Oh, I haven't seen you since last year. When oh, should those God. end? No, I saw someone that said, my dad thinks he's so funny. He uses it every year and falls out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It is funny. That's why. <laughs> I did get to see Adam over the break um, when you were in Atlanta. You and your wife, Abby, and your brother who lives here. And um, yeah, so that was cool. Yeah, it was fun. Um, and you did some traveling. Tell us about your travel real quick. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, started our travels. We went to a wedding in Thailand up in Chiang mm-hmm. Mai. A uh, really nice little wedding for some friends of ours. And then the highlight there was we got to uh, go to an elephant sanctuary and mm-hmm. uh, feed elephants, bathe them, everything like that. That was really cool. Uh, and Asian elephants are a lot smaller uh, than African elephants. So, you know, they, they're they still pretty big and intimidating, but I didn't feel like they were going to crush me if like right. I got in their way. So uh, that, that was nice. And a lot of them were, you know, it's nice to hear at the sanctuary. A lot of them come from like, uh, circuses or you know kind of other situations where they're kind of come to have have a good like home here um and so that was nice and it was all warm and great there and then we went to seoul south korea for the second half of our trip uh and it was negative weather the whole time freezing but it was really cool it's a you know if anyone's been to seoul it's it's like a tokyo it's like one of those huge mega cities where you see buildings as for as far as you can go and very beautiful it's up in the mountainous region and we even went to the dmz so we got close to north korea uh fortunately not into north korea but close enough to see it and um kind of experience that and kind of just yeah kind of live the city life and eat some really good food and then yeah we yeah. came back to atlanta came to atlanta for the highlight the, the uh highlight of the trip no, i'm joking no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Stephen, and i you're always a highlight of any trip yeah no what can i say <laughs> well listen i'll let you all uh take it away with movie reviews Sure thing. So I know it's been a while since we all seen each other. I won't go too much into what I've seen uh, over the holidays, except for more of the recent stuff. But I did want to point out a few highlights. Uh, First, I'll start with the movies. Um, One that was kind of fun is Confess Fletch. And this is a movie that actually came out last summer or last fall. And it's now on streaming services. And it stars John Hamm as the Fletch character from uh, when Chevy Chase was doing those movies back in the 90s and the 80s. So it's kind of like that in the spiritual role. He's Fletch. There's a murder that happened. And it's really a fun, easygoing mystery. So John Hamm does a good job of the comedic role. And if you're looking for just something lighthearted, something you can even put on in the background while you're watching uh, or doing something else, uh, I do recommend this one. Again, it's a fun watch. Uh, the big one, of course, was Glass Onion for me, and that was the Knives Out movie. Uh, Benoit Blanc's back. He's going to this island where the rich, this rich guy and all of his friends have kind of uh, gathered for a special celebration, and then a murder happens. And so, again, the game's afoot, and he has to figure things out, but he gets to help from, um, I forgot the name of the character in the movie, but she's played by Janelle Monet. Uh, and all around good cast, uh, great movie. I don't know, but she gave you got a chance to see it, but this was, um, you know, worth watching a lot of kind of parallels to some real world celebrities as well that you get a little, uh, fun dig at. And, um, it was a good kind of to go along for the ride. Okay. Um, so with yeah. the Oscars coming up, do you, do you, um, have anything that you think would be a favorite or anything that it's going to be a standout for you? Uh, you know, I have to revisit the year. So I will say, I mean, I like Glass Onion a lot and I don't know what nominations came out uh, or what they're looking at yet. So I will, uh, I guess it's to be determined. I really have been just uh, kind of catching up on everything from the holidays to get okay. involved. Um, 
I know the Golden Globes just happened, but I think Golden Globes can be ignored at this point. Um, they don't really do anything, mean anything. But uh, congratulations to all the people who won one, of course. But uh, it's kind of like the Grammys, right? It's not a real award show, um, mm. in my opinion. Um, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, we'll see. People say that we're harsh, Adam. I'm, I'm beginning to believe them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well well yeah if you want good happy time reviews go somewhere else we're gonna yeah. give you the real deal Amen. Uh, the last the last movie i want to mention though is i did watch is the menu and this came out again during the holiday and this is the uh it's more of a dark comedy than a horror but it's about these people that come to this island to eat at this super fancy restaurant but when they get there things are not all as they seem and uh ralph Fiennes kind of is the head chef of this restaurant where bad things start happening to all the guests uh, i don't want to spoil it too much if you've seen the trailer you get the idea but that was another it's a good movie i wouldn't call it well i wouldn't call it a bad movie i don't know if i'd call it a good movie it's entertaining enough it's a little cheesy at points you know it's getting got some of those horror elements but uh it's got some funny moments too so if you're looking for a good one and i think that's on hbo hbo right now uh check it okay. out all right uh, and then I could talk about shows, but you get, I don't know if you have any movies you want to mention or if you would like me just to roll right into it. So um, there's a, one movie that I'll mention. Uh, it was actually brought to my attention by Lena Waithe. Lena Waithe, if you don't know who she is, she is the creator of The Shy. And um, for me, when filmmakers suggest certain films, I tend to, especially filmmakers that I like, I tend to listen to them and check out what their uh, recommendation is. And Lena Waithe recommended The Inspection. And I found that The Inspection was executive produced by Gabrielle Union because she stars in it as well. And um, it stars Jeremy Pope, Gabrielle Union, Bokeem Woodbine, and Raul Castillo. And it's about a homeless gay youth who is out of options in life and he decides to enlist in the Marines. And then his whole journey of enlisting into the Marines as a gay young black man and um, how that affects him, how that affects his, his platoon and how it also affects his family. It's pretty interesting. Uh, this is the first film in a long time that I've actually had a uh, emotional roller coaster with because it does take you on a ride. You'll be happy, you'll be sad, you'll be confused, you'll be mad. And sometimes the shift is abrupt because of the storyline and how it goes. Uh, I highly recommend it. As of right now, you can stream it on Prime, but it's not, um, you don't access it um, in Prime, you access it through the uh, early release portal. Uh, but it, it's so worth it. Uh, definitely check it out. Shout out to Gabrielle Union for executive producing uh, this project. And I did do a post on it on one of my social media pages, and she did like the comment. Thanks, Gab. Um, yeah, so definitely check it out. And nice. um, everything else, you know, is pretty much uh, streaming uh, television show based for me. Uh, it's a new show on HBO called The Last of Us, mm -hmm. which is a pretty much a... Um, apocalyptic story uh which is pretty interesting um we're, we're two episodes in. i've only saw one i didn't see the one that aired last night so when i conclude my stephen knight show business i'll be jumping into that <laughs> and uh the next streaming thing is called the hunters which stars al pacino and this is the second season and this is streaming on prime and this is about the um people hunting down ex-nazi officers mm. and assassinating them which i thought was pretty is a pretty interesting premise and uh it gets really political and it gets really uh, controversial in some of the storylines and you know why they believe people should be murdered and does one murder make the other one better like you can't mm -hmm. do two wrongs to make a right it's interesting definitely check it out and um the last of the television shows that i'm watching is a new show called Mayfair Witches, and that's streaming on AMC+. Plus. A, uh, Mayfair Witches is an extension of the Alice Rice uh, immortal universe, which mm. is also um, 
has interview with a vampire yeah. inside of it. So these things are connected. They have not connected them in storyline as of yet, but uh, I can't wait to see how this grows and how it becomes a thing. If anyone knows what's going on with Interview with a Vampire, there's seven episodes in. I read that there's supposed to be 15. I don't know if this is a mid-season break and they're going to continue or they waited to start the Mayfair Witches, you know, in between and then Mayfair Witches will do the same thing. They'll break and then Interview will come back. I don't know. But if anyone knows anything, please hit me up, DM me, send me a post, a tweet, something. Let me know what's going on. But that's all I have for right now. Nice. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, you're going to watch The Last of Us, which is good. And for, yeah. I'm sure, Stephen, you probably heard this too, because the internet is talking about it nonstop. But it's based on a, a video game, an award-winning video game from like a decade ago. And from what I've heard uh, or read, and I've only, I haven't played the game, but I've watched the two episodes. It is so far following the game, like almost the scene by scene, like the storyline. Mm. So uh, it's been getting a lot of praise. It's uh, as kind of the best video game adaption show out there or movie. And uh, yeah, it's a fun watch. It's uh, it's definitely got some horror elements, though. So if you're you're trying yes. to go to bed right afterwards, you don't want to watch some of these uh, kind of zombie like creatures. And I want to say it's a, a fun fact for uh, Last of Us. The first episode, which is the only one I saw thus far. There's a young girl that plays the daughter in the first episode. That is Miss Thandie Newton's daughter. This is her first acting role. And um, I think she does a bang up job. I think she's going to be just as good as her mom. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because I didn't know who it was at first, but you could see that in the smile of the daughter that mm -hmm. it's definitely, you know, her daughter. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, 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 she does a great job and no spoilers too much for anyone because you'll see it in the first episode, but it's a shame we won't see much of her um throughout the series um the only other thing i want to mention is i did and did, i don't know Chiki, did you ever watch that the bear show about that uh sandwich shop in chicago with all the cooks so you you're talking that? about with, with with uh the guy from shameless yeah yeah so i i, I did get into it initially but then i kind of fell off of it is okay it worth going back to it yeah yeah it's good it's intense again it's one of those uh because i watched it we binge watched it uh we watched them all there's only eight episodes but yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's very good again it's very intense it's it makes me never want to work in a kitchen uh and yeah. glad that i haven't because yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, hard work hard work and high stress environment so uh yeah yeah i would say finish it up because okay. uh, yeah you won't be disappointed and okay. then i do want to add one show that i want to warn people about i guess and this is um the only reason i watched two episodes i was like this show is just not for me it's your honor and this is the latest brian cranston show and i don't know if either yeah. of you've heard of it but so i watched the first season i haven't gotten into anything else though okay good yeah i so i i after two episodes or three episodes i told my wife i'm not gonna finish this it it didn't compel me it was too much of uh, it's a little uh, too much high suspenseful music and high dramatic scenes throughout each episode that's that went nowhere i felt like mm. um and yeah i i i know it is finished the season but i feel like and i've heard like the characters aren't relatable it's really brian cranston does a great job but he's just playing walter white uh mm. as a judge um anyway so, I mean, if you liked it, that's good. But uh, for me, it was something that I'm like, don't waste your eight hours, 10 hours. Yeah. And it's getting a lot of publicity. They are, they're pushing it. They are pushing it. That's that's what I, uh, I mean, I'm, again, that's not what I would say I'm afraid of, but I'm just, you know, they could just, the writing, it's not, the, it's not Breaking Bad. It's not yeah. Better Call Saul. It's not that same quality that you expect from those shows. And I think it's really trying to push, push it a lot. But I will say, it's shot very well. The cinematography is good. The scenes, New Orleans is the backdrop and they do a good job of like giving you that New Orleans feel. Yeah. So being as though you brought that up on the same network, I uh, finished uh, George and Tammy, uh, George, about George Jones and Tammy Wynette mm. and their, their relationship. Um, I thought that the show was good. I just didn't like how it they round up the ending. You know, sometimes when you watch certain thing and it has a pace, 
you get accustomed to the pace. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, it just seemed like toward the end, they wrapped it up really quickly. It's like they they tucked it away, put a bow on it and presented it and was like, okay, we're done. Um, and I know that the show was only supposed to be about a certain portion of their life, but it just seems to me toward the end, they just rushed it close mm. because they had to do it in a certain amount of episodes. And it, and it, and it felt and looked that way to me. That's all. Yep. But I thought it was good. It's just, I didn't like the ending. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, I'll talk about two things briefly. Best man, the series on Peacock outstanding. I thought it was wonderful. I think they could actually could do more seasons. I don't think they will, but it was really good. Um, and then I saw Whitney Houston, I want to dance somebody, the biopic of Whitney Houston's life. Um, so apparently the director said originally that movie was four hours long, but she had to back it to like two hours. And you can kind of tell because a lot was missing. Um, mm -hmm. What was great was the actress who played Whitney Houston, Naomi Aki, she killed she killed it. She embodied Whitney Houston. She looks nothing like her. And she said when she was cast, she was thinking, I look nothing like Whitney Houston. But they said, focus on the acting. We'll do everything else. They did a great job with the costumes. She had Whitney Houston's mannerisms. She even talked like Whitney. And of course, they used Whitney Houston's real music. So it was great for performances. The, some of the feedback I did see was that a lot of times they played the full performance and they could have cut those down to give more depth to the actual story um for me there wasn't nothing that you didn't really learn you know what i mean um that you didn't already know about her story i think this movie would have been better would have done better if it was released it was the first movie released about whitney houston there have been a lot of movies released since she passed if this was the first one or if it was released maybe 10 years from now um because people know the story they're not interested you know but um also, I didn't like they they put more emphasis on Whitney Houston's relationship with her um, best friend slash early teenager love interest Robin than she did they did on her relationship with Bobby. And I saw an interview with Clive Davis. He said he wanted to include the Robin part because Whitney did have a one year relationship with Robin when she was a teenager. But I saw her date a lot of men leading up to Bobby. But you didn't get that from there. You seemed like everything was about Robin. You know what I mean? Um, but overall, I thought it was good. But I do see where they they just, they just the lot was left out. You know what I mean? And you, and you left the movie sad. <laughs> you left the movie wow. sad. They handled so, the death well, but it was sad. Mm -hmm. So from what I'm understanding about this film, this film was more so a vehicle for the music as opposed to anything else. That's what it's it was. about yeah. the music. Yeah. Yeah, but I will say that they, um, so you know, the families behind this movie, um, Pat Houston, who's her executive producer, she was seen in a, she didn't have a big role in the movie, like her character, but she was in the best light, and Clive Davis was in the best light, he was, you know, the big man, so they were, I saw some reviewer was saying, it's interesting, these two people were perfect, <laughs> everyone else was horrible, you know what I mean, yeah, but, um, but, I do think it was a good movie. I just, um, I I think it wasn't as developed as it could have been. The story could have been, but in terms of acting, Stanley Tucci he plays Bobby. Um, I mean, uh, Clive Davis he kills it, um, and the acting was really great. It was great. The music it was great. Hearing her voice on the loud speaker in the theater, um, and even again, Nami did a great job portraying Whitney Houston. I just think it just wasn't good timing for the movie. And then it was going against Avatar. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, but but I think it'll do, I think it'll do. I think this is one of those movies. It's kind of like a Sister Act two, which didn't do good when it first came out, but later became bigger as it started um, rerunning and that kind of thing. Once this hits streaming services, I think it'll do a lot better. You know, you know, you heard it here first. It's going to be a stage play. And they're going to feature Whitney Houston's music in the stage play. Hmm. Oh, nice! That'll be awesome. I'm, 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 I'm guessing. I'm not saying oh. that's for sure. This <laughs> is just but I don't see it going. I don't really see how they do that in the stage stage play because typically with plays you have the actress singing. It's about the music. It's not about the vehicle in which you get the music played. It's about the music. 
I get, yeah, I get that. I definitely. As long get as you that. get the spins, you get the royalties. Hey, Tina Turner became a stage play. Yeah, Tina's not singing. But no, but the the actress is singing though. Right, they'll find an actress that can sing. Deborah Kahn can do Whitney Houston very well. Who? Yeah, that's true. A lot of people can sound like Whitney Houston. No, they can't. They tried. Deborah Cox tried. Didn't work. But anyway, um, anyway. <laughs> Steven, number one hater. No, I'm not, but I'm saying it was the, the 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 best thing about this movie was that they had her real voice. And and Naomi does sing some Whitney like when she's younger. And um and she does a good job matching it. But when you hear Whitney Houston's voice kick in, the first time you will hear is Early in the movie, when she sings The Greatest Love of All, she fills in for her mother, who acted like she was sick because Clive Davis was the audience. And at first, you can hear it's Naomi singing it, but then you hear Whitney's voice come in, and you're like, you miss that. You know what I mean? But anyway, it's a good movie. But watch it on uh, on uh, streaming services. Yeah, yeah. But that was it for me. Oscar season, I'm very glad that Angela Bassett is winning. She's won the... Um, uh, what was the what was the awards? Golden, Golden Globe. Globe. Golden Globes, and she won another. They one. don't mean anything. Yeah, they're so forgettable. Well, but she won. But what's the other one she won though? The, the Piers. Um, say that again. The peer the the Nest Award she won. The Piers they do the voting. Oh, Crit- People's Choice or yeah. Critics' no. Choice or something like that, or Nickelodeon just won Awards. Anyway, but they said this award, that award show, is more indicative of who's going to win the Oscar. Oh, the yeah, you're right. I forgot. But she what. won. She won that award too. Um, the SAG Awards or something. SAG right? Award. Yeah, or that's what it is. Year. Yeah. And um, so you know, there's a lot of controversy about you know um, some of the actors that are in some of these hero Marvel DC movies um, winning those type of awards for those type of movies. It's a big brouhaha over that. But you know, she's the first one from that franchise to win. So the argument is and be nominated. Whether whether it's it's worthy of that type of accolade. And my take on it is this. I don't know if people really realize what happens when these people are you know filming these movies. They're acting to nothing. (laughs) They're acting to right green wall in space Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the ability for you to evoke emotion out of nothingness i think is beyond talent because now you're not even acting with another actor you're acting to um tennis balls on a wall (laughs) Mm -hmm. or 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 maybe an empty space or a place filler not even a human sometimes and when you can get performances like that that's not worthy of an award yeah yeah, I, I I push back on that, but there there's a brouhaha over that. Well, that's the internet. Everyone has an opinion on everything. Of course, so, everyone. Has them, yeah, and, and one of the things to remember, and this is not uh, this this is like it's not a secret, right? Awards shows are marketing events. Studios put mm-hmm. their best. They put what they know will win and get more advertising. So anyone who watches award shows, they're great, they're fun, but don't put too much stock in them. Yeah, Critic Choice Award. Those awards. Ah. Uh, all right, guys. Well, listen, as always, thank you for letting us know what to spend our time and our money on and what not to and wait on streaming services, which I had to cancel like four streaming services I didn't know I was paying for. Um, oh, I saw it on Amazon. That's <laughs> so. why all my accounts shut down. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Well, listen, have a great week. We'll see you again next week and we'll be right back after this. Thanks.